these are the features that distinguish between the dicots and the monocots. And you can see that these are things cotyledons, leaf venations, stipules, perianth numbers, leaf bases. There are so many of them there. But in this case, in the, with these specimens, we can look at the information we have gathered and the sepals and the petals. So there are many features that we can use to distinguish between, monoco between monocots and dicots. Amongst them is the perianth members, that is the number of sepals or petals is the one very important feature. In dicots, we have four to five per flower. In monocots, it starts with three or six or nine. It varies like three, six, nine. Whereas in dicot, it goes as five, four to five, then 10, 15, something like that. So in our, in our case, we have five petals. So it's more likely that our sample belongs to dicot. And there is another feature, leaf venation. In dicot, it is reticulate, and in uh, monocots, it's convergent. What does that mean? The leaf veins are reticulate, so this is called, this kind of venation is reticulate. You can see that better here at the back. So the leaves are, the, the, the veins are going in a reticulate manner. That's why it is in the dicots. In monocot, the leaves will be running parallel. And the veins will be running parallel like this, just like in the grasses. So here are the, the veins that are going reticulate, but in monocot, they will be parallel like this. Yeah, based on the information we have collected, our specimen has got five petals and the leaves are reticulate. As a result, we conclude that our specimen is a dicot. So as a result, we can start using the keying the specimen starting from here, using the, the first key for identification. So let's start keying out this specimen. This is the specimen we've been dealing with. We have collected all the information, and uh, the information is here, written down in a pictorial manner, as well as the, the in, uh, with all the information. Using that information and the specimen in front of us, we should be able to identify that into family and then into the genus. Firstly, we know that it is a dicot. We start with number one. So number one, you are, uh, read what it says. Flowers with perianth, P means perianth, of one to two layers. Worlds means layers. In this case, we have two layers, right? One, two. The, the answer is yes. It goes to number two right? Then go to number two. Perianth segments. In this case, the word, there is another word called perianth. Perianth means these two, the sepals and the petals, together, commonly known as perianth. The sepals and petals, commonly known as perianth. Perianth segments, more than six. So, we have five plus five. Five petals, five sepals is equal to 10, and the 10 is more than six, so we need to go to step three. Explain. Okay, to start, you start from the step one and answer the question, what is being asked there, flowers with perianths of one to two layers of the worlds, yes, 
then you go to number two and it at number two the next question is perian segments more than six here we need to add both the petals and the sepals together and now in this case there are five plus five ten segments and the ten segments are more than six and then we go to step three and the next step three you answer another question it says C means corolla or perianth polypetalous or polyphyllous polypetalous or polyphyllous means are they free we, we noted that the petals were free yes they were they are free and the answer is step four the step four which says that all flowers one sexual means they had either male or female or most flowers were two sexual means bisexual we saw most because <clears throat> we dissected two flowers both had male and female so number four male plus female we had as a result we go to step 26 so go to 26 and then the question there is gynesium apocarpus with several free carpels or gynesium syncarpus that means the ovary when we cut it open did we see the ovary to be when you look at the, the these were the sepals right did we see one ovary like that or did we see several ovaries one two separate ones we saw this kind of ovary that is the <clears throat> that is gynesium syncarpus means there is only one chamber with one ovary with one or more chambers that's called syncarpus so if syncarpus means united so there could be one only one or maybe more than one they are all united and giving the shape of only one so in this case 26 we had one ovary and one chamber that leads to 56 so now we go to 56 that is 56 there are several options in 56 the option is C means Corolla all this by the way all these abbreviations are there at the front of the book so it's in your uh, the the front of this we have all the abbreviations we can see the abbreviations and symbols all shown here right so number 56 C means Corolla so we had five petals five petals corresponding to five petals here five petals that takes us to one one three now it there is another question k means calyx that is the sepals and uh, there are so four options in, in this case the calyx five or more and then in this we had one one three five sepals and that takes us to 122 right 122 122 is somewhere here 
then the question is, was the ovary superior or inferior? If the ovary is sitting like this, right, with all the sepals like that, it is superior. If the ovary is sunken like that, you can see the ovary inside and it is coming out and this all the green bit, this is inferior. So in this case 122 ovary is similar to like that, so it is superior, superior means 123. Then 123 is asking style 1 with simple stigma and the stigma sessile styles or stigmas more than 1. That means when we looked at the ovary, ovary was like that, style was like that and then this was the stigma. Sometimes you will have one here and then you will have the projections like that. So you got five stigmas and here one and simple. It is simple, it is branched. Simple stigma sessile and 124. So the 124 is the next question. The leaves are opposite or alternate? So then you need to go back to your sa sample. In this case, the whole thing is a leaf. In this case, the whole thing is a leaf. And uh, you look at the position of each one. There is one here and then above that there is another one, above that there is another one. So the leaves are alternate. So one start from here, next, 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 next. So this is the leaf is alternate. Right? And here what I want you to divert a little bit. How do you know all this alternate and then opposite? The, in, you can go back to your, the manual. And in, at the beginning of this pay, uh, the, the key, we have all the diagrams showing how the leaf shape and then arrangement of this one. So you can see that they alternate. In this case it's opposite, alternate, opposite and uh, vorticillate. All these shapes are mentioned here in your the key. It's also, it also shows the shapes of the, the leaves, shapes of the leaf tip shapes of the basis of the leaf, leaf venation, we talked about the parallel venation and reticulate venation and also it shows the different types of inflorescence that the flowers are born and the different types of the ovaries. This is the inferior ovary and then the superior ovary. All these things are described in your, uh, the, uh, the key. You should be able to refer to that before you decide whether it is inferior or superior. And also your appendix has appendices has all that nicer description for all these things. So there are many sources. You rely upon this plant identification manual as well as your appendices and where it is diagrammatically illustrated to show which one is 
alternate, which one is opposite, which one is superior, which one is uh, inferior ovary. So you should be able to refer to those ones to determine whether your specimen is as alternate uh, leaves or a compound leaves, all those things. All right, so let's move on to the next one. 124 to, we, because this has got the alternate leaves, and uh, we decided to go to 143. So 143, the question there is what is happening there? Ah, now A means andresium. Andresium means the male parts, right? So how many stamens were there? We counted, there were 10 stamens. So 10 stamens, that takes us 169, right? Let's go to the 169. The question here is the flowers were actinomorphic, means remember when we looked at the petals, they were of the same size and the shape, and if they're of the same size and shape, it is actinomorphic. If one of them is larger or smaller than the other, it is known as the zygomorphic. In our specimen, we had all the petals of similar size and shape. As a result, it is actinomorphic, and that takes us to 170. So now 170, here the anthers, were those anthers united or they were free? So sometimes the anthers, they all united like this in bundles, but in this case we had them separate. Right? So the 170 separate as a result free 174 or free. 174 is done, then the leaves, leaves simple or compound. So in this case, this entire thing is a leaf and in this case it is a compound leaf and here it is a simple leaf. How do we say that? We can see that this is the stem, this is the leaf, and the leaf axil, you have a bud, very tiny bud which you can't see many times. And if something happens to this plant, then the new shoot comes up here through that bud. So here the bud is located here, that's why it is a simple leaf. And here the bud is located here. So in this case, the entire thing is a leaf. And that leaf has got several segments, whereas in here, the entire thing is a leaf. There are no segments. So that's why this one is known as the compound leaf, and this one is known as a simple leaf. 174 to 180. Now 180, we'll see what it is asking. 180 here, leaves gland dotted or leaves not gland dotted. So we looked under the microscope. We looked under the microscope. There are tiny dots in the leaves in this particular specimen. That means the answer is the leaves are gland dotted and that takes us, the answer is 182. The family number 79, Rutaceae. Oh. So now we have identified this specimen as belonging to 
the family root ACA. Right? So that's one step. The major step is to find out which family this, fami and this specimen belongs to. So this spe spe specimen belongs to the family root ACA and it is not just we are picking up that family, we are going in a systematic manner looking at various features of the plant, looking at the different parts of the flower and we have determined this is a root ACA. But we are not 100% sure, but we are more likely it is a root ACA. Let's go to the description of the root ACA. Family 79. Yeah, family 79 is described here. So it's, now we need to read carefully what it says. Flowers are bisexual, actinomorphic, sepals four to five, petals four to five, stamens as many, are twice as many as the petals, rarely more, usually free, ovary superior, consisting of four to five more or less united or free carpels, consisting of four to five more or less united free carpels, stars usually united, disc thickened, our ovules one to several perloculus, we saw only one, fruit separating, we haven't seen the fruit, so we can't talk about that. The leaves opposite or alternate, so it can be both. Simple or compound, in this case it's compound. They have definitely all of them, all the plants that belonging to this family have the gland dotted. So most of the features described here apply to this specimen. So as a result, we can say that guaranteed that this belongs to this family.